Brian from the Tone Jerks here. This is a long time coming to this video, or at least I've been planning it for a while. So you may have noticed I did kind of change a couple things in my studio. Um, so the background here did, you know, paint and kind of new desk and stuff like that. Um, and to I did document that process. I was I love watching these videos of like studio tours on YouTube of people in their creative spaces and how they make it work. Sometimes um, on camera, things look like they're really big. <laughs> and thanks to like a wide angle lens here, helps that out a lot. And this, you know, is like a studio because I do record, but I, it's also a bedroom. So you're going to see like kind of behind the scenes type of stuff. I like those type of videos. So hopefully you do too. And uh, let's go check it out. Okay, let's start off with the, I guess, the door thing. <laughs> my uh, acoustic treatment for the door here. I've had this, I mean, I did this maybe like 10 years ago. This is like Oralex uh, foam that I glued to that, or like the rubber cement or whatever they include in the kit. Rubber cemented uh, to a pegboard that I am hanging uh, off from the door. So that I'm not, I didn't attach anything to the door, didn't rip the door out. It's just a stock door. And I like to think it does something, but it could be just a placebo thing. I'm like, oh yeah, no, that's, that's a studio foam that does something, right? And then, so it's kind of a little weird space here. I do want to add more acoustic treatment in here because I almost have none. And um, maybe I should point up here. So this is something you never see in the videos. And another thing too that I think, you know, I, th I think it does something. It's got to do something. It's a blanket that I am hanging from the ceiling. I didn't, um, I, I got to like eventually get like a legit cloud. So it's above kind of the talking area. And I think it helps more with just the talking head shots that I do just because the carpet will get um, some reflections. And I think this does something, but you know, Yet again, it could be, you know, people in the comments, oh, no, no, you're wrong. You got to have like a $3,000 cloud above your, your head. Um, let's see. It's kind of a, a way that I didn't, didn't want to damage anything. I have it, I uh, don't know if you can see that, hanging from hooks that I put in the wall and suspended it with fishing line. So it's kind of just hang in here. I got some space. I'm not super tall, maybe 5'10", 5 5'11 5 on a good day, so I'm not even close to hitting it. It, I don't know, it could be just me. I like to think that it works. So this is probably what the shot that you see the most, or maybe even tighter. You kind of see that and, you know, here I am, da da da, you've got this pedal today. Or for the podcast, maybe a little bit out or this but yeah you can see it's not very big but you can get a lot done so anyways uh let's see where can we go next so i have my amps here so starting on this one side here i have my bass amp this is what i use uh, i don't really use it for videos a whole lot because i'm doing bass direct but uh gigs it's a gig with this guy it's a Terra Base uh, 5, TB500, I think C is what it's called. Um, it's the Terra Base combo. It's 2x12, 500 watts, and it's where they have the 2x12, or sorry, two 12-inch uh, speakers, one in front of the other, and that has the little uh, sound, I guess, bass, you know, to let air through or whatever. It's a tiny amp, but it actually packs a lot of, a lot of punch. Uh, you know, it's a little cliche thing to say there. Um, and then I have the extension cab with it. It's awesome. So, uh, I do gig with it, but mainly it's, looks like a prop in the background of videos. Okay. So this is my desk. Um, I guess maybe the wide angle lens might fool you, but it's not too big. It's uh, four feet by two feet deep. And uh, I'm utilizing as much of the space on here as I can. So I got my audio interface on one of these Soundrise Pro stands, these little foam um, lifters, I guess. And it helps tilt the whole interface towards me and I can run cables underneath and stuff like that. 
and they fit underneath these Soundrise Pro uh, stands. I don't know if I can get that in focus, but yeah, so you can see I can run all my cables from my interface. All right, get out of the way. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, you can run all the cables through it. I can, you know, have the speakers up at a more ear level. So these are the uh, Yamaha speakers, the smaller HS5s. I don't have the 7s or the 8s, I got the 5s. And so far, so good. I would like to eventually get a sub, but you know, that's, you know, a guy can dream, I guess. Uh, let's see. And then here, next to the uh, Apollo, I got the, you know, the infamous uh, HX Stomp here. And um, yeah, so far, so good. It's, uh, you know, still, still working. And then if I wanted to just uh, plug headphones up, I can just do that in case I didn't want to go through the whole computer to just jam out an idea. And then let's see, Got my salt rock lamps there, keeping keeping the vibes in the studio going. <laughs> let's see, um, I got my MacBook Pro. It's the 2017. Uh, it's, uh, you know, still running strong, I'm sure. It's uh, time is gonna come eventually to have to replace that, but so far, you know, it's doing well. <laughs> it's doing what I need to. Let's see. So I run it mainly as like a desktop. I'm using a 4K LG 27 inch monitor. It's, uh, yeah, working out good. Another one where I've had uh, some issues with it, where like I think a line went through it like a dead pixels or something like that but ever since they repaired it last year looks good and i got it on like a little mounted stand here to kind of give me a little bit more space and uh give me like an inch of space so i'll take it <laughs> let's see i got the cal digit um thunderbolt 3 docking station so i can run all my um peripherals and shit like that through it i can you know sd card slot reader all that stuff I think the goal is to kind of, like I said, take up, I don't know, as little amount of space, but use the shit out of it. And then I got my drives here. I got, uh, let's see if I can get them in focus here. Herman, RIP in peace. He was the goodest boy. Let's see. Got my TV on here that I never use unless I'm recording with somebody. Uh, when we were doing uh, sessions with Justin Case and... Uh, Finishing up the Plane Without a Pilot sessions, this was good because I can mirror kind of what is on um, my screen here so the singer can see. I'm like, oh, we're going to punch in in this part or whatever. But other than that, I never use it for anything. <laughs> I think I played Wii on it, and that was kind of fun because when you had to do like the whole nunchuck thing. But yeah, whatever. It's just a Samsung or something like that. And then you can kind of see throughout the studio and stuff like that, I have uh, some anime figures. Little, like, Nendoroids or whatever they're called. And then I have some of these, like, little prize figures. Nothing too crazy. No, no, like the ones that are, like, I don't know, thousands of dollars or whatever. But it's just to help keep, a, you know, the vibe up in the studio. <laughs> uh, let's see, I got the SM7B, always kind of hooked up to my Apollo. So if I wanted to jump on uh, to a podcast, it's easy to do. So sometimes I'll go, and I've been on the Effects Loop podcast, and it just surprised me, and it's, like kind of sometimes it's like you have like an hour to prepare and it's always hooked up so i like that let's see uh to the left of the desk i have amps that i actually use so the bass amp is mainly just a prop unless i'm playing a gig it's out of here and then this stuff is what i actually use so started at the top here um really great amp i it's kind of I don't know, rare, or if, I don't know if you're an orange fan or whatever. It's the AD15, uh, 1x12 combo. So they have the AD30, which we'll get to, and then they have this AD15. It's so awesome. It's 15 watts. It's a 1x12 uh, V30 in there. It's class A. It's, uh, you know, awesome. It takes pedals really well. And 15 watts is, just, you know, you get, getting older here. I'm realizing, like, 15 watts actually... That might be enough for gigs. I like it. So when I get another band going, this might be uh, one of the, the main drivers of that. Let's see. Uh, some other little fun things. I got this little uh, snack bowl thing. Uh, and it's full of picks. And a couple of random things. Like 
you can never have too many of these. So I always kind of keep a couple of those in there. But it's just an assortment of picks. So uh, different sizes, different shapes, different ones maybe I got from Nam or uh, we've been sent some different ones to try out. Yeah, they're always kind of just in there just to grab. Okay, and then I got my Axe 8 here that uh, we used heavy on the Just In Case EP that we put out and the new plane EP that we're coming out with. Uh, obviously, always a big fan of tubes, but once I started going with Axe FX and really diving in and tweaking it, it's, I, you know, I, I can't say enough good things about it. It's awesome. It's rad. Uh, this is an old model, too, and they got two new ones since, since then. But to the right of that, I got my little two notes kind of set up here. So let's see if we can focus it. You got the uh, Captor Torpedo, uh, which is like a load box. It takes the amp's like signal and it will um, kind of bring it down to a silent level if you wanted it to. And then it can send out a line level of the amp sound to the cab M here. And this has the uh, IRs and different uh, you know cabs that you can load into it. And then it goes XLR out and I can go to my Apollo. Phew. Let's see. So you can see it's getting tighter and tighter as it, it's you know, on this rack here, because everything is wired up to where I can just use it easily. So like I said, this one gets used, that doesn't. <laughs> okay, and as we go down to the next level, let's see. I got my cloud lifter here. You're gonna see that. So the SM7 hooks into this, so it's always hooked up there, run through all this mess, which we'll get to. <laughs> Always plugged in and out of this goes straight into the Apollo as you can kind of see I had a little marks here So I got the UA there and then I got my uh, H5 so uh, I can always just use my SM7, but sometimes I use my SM7 for uh, The YouTube videos, so if I'm doing the talking headshot in the beginning, I will unplug the SM7 from um or I'll leave this cable plugged in, but I'll plug the SM7 with a separate cable into this, which I have. Let's see if I can get it out. This cable, it's, uh, yeah, I just go, go into there and I can get my uh, SM7 signal. So I don't really have to reroute anything from here. I just plug a separate cable into there. It's already ready to go. I don't have to, don't have to get to the back of it and everything and plug it all in. Let's see. And then here uh, is my DI box. I got the Countryman DI here. And then this, again, has a um, XLR out of the back here. So it's always plugged here in the bottom. Let's see if I can get to it. I have all my different cables here. So you can see it's the Axe 8. is plugged into the back of that. I got the Cap M here. I think I got the DI. I uh, saying how easy it is, and I got shit everywhere. There we go. Yep. I got the DI. So they're all there, and I can just add another XLR to whatever source I'm trying to get. So if I want to get the Axe 8, I just plug an XLR going from there, the DI, etc., etc. So, yeah, I it, it's not the best setup, but I'm liking it so far. You know, I see all the big big studios and, like, you know, like Pete Thorne's got, like, the amp switcher and all this shit like that. You know, that's really awesome. That's awesome, but... <laughs> I'm not there yet. So far, this is working out, and I'm digging it. Let's see. I got this uh, Akai Mini. Uh, it's like a USB like MIDI um, controller. I almost never use it. I mainly just use it for to tap out beats and easy drum, like and then it will do the uh, tap to find beat function, and that's all I use that for. So. That's good. <laughs> uh, let's see, moving on down here, one of my favorite amps. Um, yeah, no, I just said it about the AD-15. Yeah, they're, they're, they all lasted the purge, and I had a gear purge this past year, and these are the ones that are sticking around. So I got my AD-30. It is the single channel version, which I heard it's the best. And I hear it just on different forums, and then uh, one of my favorite YouTubers, Brett Scholl, says it's good too, so I like it. Let's see. Yeah, pretty pretty easy setup. It's pretty much the 30 watt version of this without speakers. So, uh, do I need both of them? No, but I think this is sticking around. And then I have my Azusa from Kaon on here. 
Let's see. And then we got down here. Got my Rock of Herb 50 Mark II. Played with this one a lot. Really like it. It's the Mark II version, which I heard that the Mark I's better, heard the Mark III's better. But I like this one. It's okay. I don't mind having a version that people don't like. So I heard that the clean channel is not that great. And that's okay because I never use that. The Dirty Channel rocks. It's fucking awesome. It's great. This is, I don't know, kind of like if I think of a punk rock sound for me and for music that I write and bands that I'm doing, it's the orange sound, is it? So, yeah, these are the two. And they have um, their speaker cables in the back that kind of I can pull and just um, plug into the uh, torpedo back here. And they're all bo they're both labeled. They're always kind of plugged up. And then I just got to make sure I have the right one plugged in, turned on. And with the speaker load, and then I can just, you know, switch over and record to that. So it's a very tight setup. Like I said, I got, you know, extra headphones. I got the MDR with the Sonys. Yeah. They're okay. They're a studio standard, and they're actually kind of uncomfortable. So they're kind of my second set of headphones. And let's see, you got PS3, which is down here. I almost never play. If I do, I just get some GTA and just uh, blow shit up for like an hour, and then we're, we're good. Okay, I gotta move to this next part. Okay, so this is the part that you almost never see in videos because of how I light it and how maybe it's out of focus and stuff like that, or it's just very bokehed out. So it's a black sheet that I have to hide my cable management. I, honest to God, did the best that I could, but I just gave up. You can kind of see I have a lot of the stuff, like extra cables and stuff like that, that I pull out and use. I roll up and I hang on hooks in the back that I can grab them easy and then you know I like I said honest to god I, I tried I tried but <laughs> let's pull that curtain back okay so I have the cables hidden by this sheet but I have these little um velcro strips kind of attached to this fabric here and then you can just pull them away which we're already <laughs> get it on the other side too there it is I Maybe I didn't try very hard, but I just wanted to get moving. Yep, I'll show you my scars. <laughs> I don't mind. So I got everything kind of labeled, at least, on my power strip here. And then, yeah, we just kind of hide that. Yeah, you know, I said earlier, I have a cable that runs to uh, the different sources I'm recording. It's this. This will just run over here and I can get the axe effects, I can get the two notes or whatever, and then right now we're using the HX stomp, just plugged up, and then I just tuck it all the way under there. Yeah, maybe I'll come back and give it another shot to try and clean that up, but so far it's fine. And then I got my headphones that I like to use from Audio-Technica. Let's see, what are they called? Ah, the ATH M50Xs. So, these are more comfortable than the Sony's. And I think they have a little bit more bass, so that's either a good or bad thing. You're not supposed to use headphones really for mixing, so for tracking it might be really cool because you're like, oh man, this bass or guitar tone sounds fucking heavy. It's because it's all, you know, <laughs> bassed out. And then just uh, my normal keys here. Just kind of hanging on the, another one of those hooks. And then I got mounted underneath. I got a pick holder just so I can have, you know, you get picks everywhere, right? Try not to have picks just strewn about. So they'll either go under there or they'll go in the bowl there. Okay, and then just kind of to the right of the desk, I have my guitar stand, guitar rack or whatever, that I definitely want to upgrade. It's kind of falling apart. It's an old one from like 2006. Got when uh, Kyle and I were in high school, we got it. And it's falling apart. The, the foam is kind of just coming off and like it was was sticking to some guitars so i wrapped it with just like old t-shirts and shit like that and kind of does the job but yeah i should step it up a little bit so in the meantime this is gonna be all right so i got uh let's see got my gibson sg here yeah so probably heard about this one it's got, surprise, surprise, Evertune Bridge. Got the Sonic pickups, the Crystal Palace. It's got the Gun Street harness. It's got that volume bleed deal, treble. And then 
Got some anime stickers on the back. Yeah, it's a great guitar. It's a really chunky neck. So for SG, that kind of little bit of neck dive, but the Evertune actually helped out with that. Maybe I should have let off with this one. This is uh, my favorite. You all know about it. You all know who this is. It's the Equits Rayburn. The same kind of deal. It's got the Sonic Pickups Crystal Palace. Got the Evertune. Got the uh, Gun Street Harness. But this one actually has that knob there. Or this little switch. I can't do that with this. Holding this. But yeah, got the on-off switch there. And yeah. Favorite guitar. Killer guitar. Great neck. Great sound. Awesome. Kevin, you're the man. Just as I throw it at my other guitars. It's a lot harder to do with one hand. So, the pink Les Paul Jr. Similar setup. It's got, uh, this one actually has a Duncan 59 in the bridge. was an awesome pickup still. And then the Evertune. And then same deal, got the on-off switch. At the Yeah, you can see there was a trend with some of these guitars. Locking tuners, broken headstock, you know, the Gibson standard. Yeah, this was a main player guitar for years until I got the Equits. So, not that it's a bad guitar, it's just I like the Equits a little bit more. <laughs> Let's see, and then basses I got here. So, I got two of them. I can't really tell which one's my favorite. So I kind of do a lot of rotation when I'm playing with between these two. So this is a Mexican Fender P bass. Maybe I have a little bit more history with this one. It was uh, I got Ray there, but badass bridge. Got the Seymour Duncan bass line quarter pounder pickups. Uh, yep, same on off switch and volume from Gun Street Wiring Shop. Yeah. It's a Mexican P bass from, I think, 94, I think. It was my aunt's, and she gave it to me when I first expressed interest in learning an instrument. She uh, gave me this guy, and I was saving up for it, and then she kind of gave me that, and I was able to buy an amp with it, the money that I saved to buy the bass. So, let's see. Got my jazz bass, American jazz bass, Not a whole lot that I... Actually, no. It's kind of the same deal. The Seymour Duncan Baseline Quarter Pounder Pickups. Badass Three Bridge. This one has a string through. Got K on, on here. And then these are two dummy pots and just the one volume to control both. I know jazz bass you can blend, and that's kind of one cool thing that people like to do. I don't. I just want them on. Or off. So when I uh, <laughs> took it to the shop and had him request that, it's like, we can do other things, man. We can do it. No, no, don't. I won't use it. Okay, let's check out some of the guitars on the wall. So I got my Taylor 410CE. I am the only owner of this guitar, which is kind of cool, but I bought it when I was like 18 years old, so it was kind of a dumb purchase because I'm sure I could have got a better guitar. For less money if I would have bought it used. So, you know, it's kind of cool that I'm the only one, but, you know, what are you going to do? Okay, so this guitar here, uh, I've had, yeah, since 2006. So it's up there with, like, the longest running of my collection here. So between the bass and then my Strat, which I'll show you. Yep, this is it. And I couldn't ask for anything more out of an acoustic. I might actually go through, and I just said that, there isn't, like, that... EP or EX expression or whatever with this that I don't really like, but um, friend uh, Scott at the FX Loop podcast said that you can take that out and because they have it to where it's like you have to run a, a, a TRS cable out of it to get the full output of the and so like that's such a pain in the ass. But anyways, still great guitar, sounds great, mic'd or you know through the DI. Let's see. And then, oh, there we go. I should have been doing that. Got my Jazzmaster. So this is a AVRI, American Vintage Reissue. Uh, or is it the American Reissue? It's the 60, I think, 3? Or 62 Jazzmaster. 
So this is an American one. It has all the nitro and stuff like that, so it's kind of cool. So this actually was here when I bought it. So somebody was playing the hell out of it, and then I bought it, and I'm also playing the hell out of it. Very cool. Pretty much stock. I think it does have a jet. Actually, no, it does have the Gun Street wiring harness to actually make this... Um, got rid of the jazz circuit. So I'm able to use treble and volume for each pickup there. It's awesome. It's great. Guitar. Um, yeah, I need to play it a little bit more. So, but it's, uh, yeah, that's why every time I look at it, I feel guilty because I'm not playing it as much as I should. So maybe I'll do another video or, you know, single coils or something like that instead of just going straight to the equits. But if I'm using the equits, I don't feel guilty. Let's see. What do we got here? Oh, it's my strat. So this is the my first electric guitar. Squire, Strat, Affinity, and I have beat the hell out of it, replaced the neck. It's got locking tuners, it's got the bone nut, it's got, uh, let's see, Seymour Duncan JB in the bridge, which is all gross, it's from covered in sweat and shows and some blood on here, some, you know, chipping of paint, and then stickers galore. And then I thought it was cool, I'd throw, and kind of toss this thing around on stage because I'm like, it's a cheap guitar, and then broke the pick guard, and I'm like, don't give a shit. Rip those pickups down anyways. Similar setup where it's just volume only. I got the Gun Street, same treble bleed in there. And yeah, it's a great guitar. Actually, doesn't look like it. But yeah, there's Herman. There's anime stickers, there's Herman, there's band, punk bands. There's, yep, a little 60 cycle home there. And then, yeah, so this one, I don't know. I'm kind of tempted to just re, I don't know, do this and make it a proper single, uh, three single coil strat. Um, Kyle doesn't think I should get rid of it, but I'm still going to keep the pick guard. And hang it on the wall or something like that. But I think just to get this going in a different way, because it has a very similar voice to the other three guitars that are just humbucker in the bridge. Let's see. Uh, I got a shelf there with all my more weeb anime shit. So I got my Love Live here. And Nico. I got the Aquars there. Yep. Fun stuff that you guys want, probably wanted to see. Let's see. Okay. Closet. I kind of like this because it's so organized. I got all my camera gear, like the cables. It doesn't look organized, but at least I know where things are. Lighting, or this is actual audio stuff. So I got the zoom in here. Got the different mic cables and stuff like that. And then for the phones or whatever, got little stands. Got kind of my computer cables in here. And different like cam link and stuff like that, so. Then we start getting into like other random shit. So I got my tape and fucking zip ties, Velcro ties, got my 3M dual lock, all that stuff like that. And then we get zip ties and more stuff. It's, it, the lower it goes, the more junk it gets. This is definitely a junk drawer. Probably good stuff in here. I just gotta go through it. And then the last drawer here is just more kind of stuff. So I think maybe the last three I gotta go through and kind of utilize the space Let's see got mic box which i got all my cables and stuff like that i took a little bit of space here to use for mic stands i kind of bought another one of these little poles here and have it and i hang all my mic stands on there so yeah that's good I got more storage in here and then i got another one of these sound rise pedal riser deals for the i use the other one for my U audio interface, and then this one I use for pedal demos, which I will throw on one of these little bar stools that here, and then that's the shot. And then I will just move that over in front of the desk, and that's it, and paste the pedal on top of it. So, yeah, go check these out. I think we still have a promo code. I'll put it in the description. I don't know if it still works. It's from like a year ago. You can see if you can get some of these for a little cheaper. So, these or the little speaker stands that you put your speakers on. The pedal risers or speaker stands. I don't know what they call it. The Soundrise Pro. Awesome. Awesome, guys. 
let's see. And then I got just like mic stands and stuff like that and get more camera stands. Let's check out the other side. All right, so this is more, there's clothes and storage and shit like that. But I think it was like a year, last year or whatever, I discovered these baker's racks and it's like for storage. I'm like, it's awesome, it's great. I feel like I'm like, everybody knows about them, but to me I'm like, whoa, these are great. I can hang everything off of them or whatever. So I got more cables, because you can never have too many cables. I feel like I did a purge of cables and I still have tons of them, so. And then I got my one spot here, so I can always just grab it. But these are, you know, pedals. I feel like I did a little with, like, hanging <laughs> on hooks. I thought this was cool. It might be just dorky. But I can always just have uh, strings at the at the go here in case I break one and I need to grab one or whatever. I don't know. I thought it was cool. So let's see what else we got back here. We got uh, the pedals that I'm not going to get rid of. So I think I don't have any boxes for them. Because I ain't getting rid of them. So let's see. And I got a lot of my like my pedals here. So here's the just surprise me one with the Futurama penis spaceship there. Got this one. Mr. Mel Chipson made this for our hundredth episode. Let's see if I can get this. Oh, I can just pick up the pedals by too. Yeah. So made this for our hundredth episode. It's a chorus clone. Yeah. Got, don't forget that one on the back. <laughs> let's see. Got some of these 12th hour devices pedals. So he sent us uh, a fuzz to give away, but he also gave us one of these clon clones that he has here. And then this one, I should do a video on. It's kind of like a chorus, kind of vibrato, kind of weird tape, kind of delay, weird modulation thing. That's the best way I can describe it. And it's a cool seafoam green. I gotta get on that. Let's see. Got more of my like my pedals. So, got my Xenon delay that Joe made for me. Let's, I got my Rem and Rom uh, Tube Screamer and Boost. Very cool pedal. Be kind of a shame that these aren't on boards, but I also like just looking at them. This is an awesome one. Unfortunately, uh, the builder has passed. Uh, Tucker from Lamp Electric. But he made this the shit box, and he put uh, the Love Live character Nico on here because she is a shit character from a shit anime. And he thought that was funny. And it's a crazy fuzz noise box. Awesome artwork. Awesome deal. Cool pedal. R.I.P. Let's see what else I got here. Uh, got the, I gotta have the, the Miku, obviously. I would never sell this for my life. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, another cool one. So, yeah, this one, we did a giveaway with Fat Foot Effects. And he made kind of like this custom artwork for us. And it's... A boost and a DOD 250 kind of pedal in one. And so this is one of two. Of course, got the fat guy. Come on. What up? What up? What up? I got 37 effects. Getting focused there. Yep. So one of the last, uh, I think, uh, before he went to circuit boards or printed circuit boards or whatever. This is one of the last ones there. Before he went to them. Let's see what else I got. Another... The pedal, a 1981 uh, DRV kind of rat clone from our uh, friend uh, Mill Chipson over there. If you couldn't tell by the artwork there, <laughs> that one's awesome. Let's see, da da da, kind of cool, like little uh, tap tempo here. Let's see if I can get it out. Yeah, little SNES controller. It's awesome. Pink wall here. Uh, here's the first and only pedal I ever built. Yeah, it's a, I think of, I can't remember what the hell, a fuzz face or something like that, or tone, tone better. It's good. It actually kind of sucks. <laughs> I don't really, I'm not a big fan of it. And I'm only keeping it because, you know, it's your first one. You got to keep, keep the first one. Let's see what else we got. And then we got more pedals. I honestly, I, I swear, I did like a, a purge and these are all still the ones that I'm keeping. Yeah, maybe I do have a problem. There's more in the back there. And then got all my pick tins in here. I'm trying to keep my picks organized. So I get the out toys and I put anime stickers on it. Of course, right? Uh, let's see. Or these are boxes of pedals that maybe, a, like this one's an empty one, Copper Sound. But uh, it's, the pedal's not in there because it's on a board. Let's see. Got the, for the box for the HX Stomp there because, you know, I might be getting rid of that one. 
<laughs> I, I, you know, hey, it's oh, I'm always looking at that one like it's might might leave. Let's see. So I've got the pedals here. I feel like I'm kind of maxed out on pedals. I'm like, eh. and then at the bottom here, I got pretty much uh, microphones, power supplies, stuff like that. Got more strings here. Got my lens boxes and stuff like that. Got my old M box, which I might I'm gonna give to a buddy. He still wants it. Got here. Yeah, very. This is like a lazy Susan kind of deal that you use for pedals. Kind of tucked out underneath, and as you can see, I'm kind of I like using as much space as I can here. I got another little bunch of cables in there. I've yeah, trying to stack as much shit in here as possible, so I can grab something if I need it. I know where to find it, and I can grab it, not to be pulling my hair out. And be like, where is it? I don't know. So I think I kind of accomplished that goal, and still have it not look like a fucking mess in here. So, I know we can get another shot here, but yeah, this is, I remember, you know, opening this up saying this is a bedroom. This is where my bed usually is when I'm not doing videos or whatever, or podcasts or whatever. I have one of those uh, floor mats that I sleep on. I got it years ago because my dog at the time, he had uh, some back issues and getting in and out of a bed or even a mattress on the ground. He had problems with, so I just slept on the ground with him, and he loved it, and I still like it, because I can fold up the bed, put it in the hallway, and I got all this space to do stuff. All right, so I think that's kind of it here. I mean, I think I covered everything, you know, I guess except for artwork or anybody cares. I got old plane, you kind of see them tucked into videos and stuff like that. Oh, Kramer, obviously. You got, you know, little drum heads and stuff like that. I got zero two over there on the drum head. Yeah, so I think I got everything. If you guys have any questions, let me know. And, you know, I'm happy with this space. Uh, of course, you know, there's always stuff to improve upon or get, you know, more stuff. But I'm trying not to uh, do that. I think I'm happy with this and I want to just work on creating and getting more videos, more songs, more demos, all that shit out there. I am happy with it. Although... You know, who knows? I say that now, and the next time I could be like, I'm cutting everything and tearing this whole wall down. <laughs> tearing the whole desk apart. Who knows? Who knows? But, yeah. Oh, and here's definitely another tip. Don't ever put your drinks on your desk. I got this little stool next to my desk, and even though it's a you know bottle of water with a closed top, still, don't put it on your desk with your computers and shit like that. You got the hard drives, you got computers. There's your little tip of the day. Gonna end it out. So hopefully you dug the video. Um, I don't think anybody was like banging down the doors like, oh, let's see your space here, bro. But I'm proud of it. And hopefully you'll want to see more of these videos because I have a lot more friends with uh, studios. Like I said before, I love watching these videos and I reached out to a bunch of buddies and they, a lot of them are into it. So we'll see more of these type of videos, checking out how people create, record, uh, video photography, all that fun stuff. And uh, be sure to uh, like, share, and subscribe. And until then, we will see you next time. Bye-bye.